um, we're just gonna start start chatting with those who are able to get on the stream a little earlier. I think, um, you know, again, uh, what I love about Chesney in this um, moment, you know, he, and this is again, I, you know, I, I want to say um, this is part of, you know, he, we literally commissioned Chesney um, a couple of months ago. So this is part yeah. of the process of developing a new play. Like August uh, or September, it was, it was not that long ago. So, um, you know, this is part of, of um, our process and we're going to keep helping Chesney through this. So, um, so that, you know, we're in a Zoom moment right now. <laughs> and, um, you know, to, to when we, um, and Aaron can speak to this as well, um, this is all new for us. So we're trying to, trying to figure out how do we create in this new world and sustain what we have done as um, uh, in the theater world. So I was so, so proud and um, just thrilled about everything that came together in, in um, so I don't know, um, folks can chime in, um, but we're, we're just extremely happy to have this moment. And again, this is the, the first part in the journey of this uh, play, which I know Chesney and, and others will be working on. So I'm just very appreciative of their uh, part in this process. Very, very much so. So I think people are still coming on slowly but surely. Um, so I wanna say Kevis Hillox, you can see him here. He played um, Home Rel in the piece. Uh, Hi everyone. Hi, Kevis. How you doing? Good, Hi. good. You're coming in from New York still, right? Yes, yes. Okay, good. I think Kevis and AJ is still here. Um, so Kevis, since you're alive, <laughs> since you're live, I might ask you some questions first. So, I mean, I was there with you as we were doing the remote filming process, but um, what was it like for you having to play you know, cinematographer, actor, post-producer, all at once. What was the process like for you? Um, it was great. It was a great process. One of the things I remember the day we were shooting, I had to say is before we started, I'm very nervous because there was a lot of moving parts that I had to do on my end. And it's just adjusting to that behavior now of, you know, yeah, I set up stuff to do self tapes, but in this setting to do like a recording and, and for it to be seen, you know. Um, but other than that, it was a great experience. You know, Chesney and I have gone gone way, way back. Chesney is the reason why I became an actor back when I was in high school. So it's just great you know to that. have everything come. Yeah, um, everything, how it's great happen? to have. How did, he, how, did, how did he pull you into this terrible, terrible world? <laughs> So while I was in high school studying to become a lawyer at the time, um, I was in a, 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 a after school program that did outreach for AIDS and HIV awareness. And they had two groups. One was called Street Team. And that version, we went out and handed out pamphlets and condoms and knowledge for to promote safe sex. And then the other side was called Theater, where we would come up with our own skits that dealt with drug abuse, domestic violence, and things of that nature. And Chesney was the head of that department and I joined that department. And in my junior or senior year, when I was thinking of, when I was applying for colleges, he said to me, I think you should apply for acting school. So that began my journey. Um, it was Chesney who, you know, brought me to the craft. Um, so yeah, just great to have it come full circle. You know, it's, it's, a pleasure to be able to work on the same project, to work on a project that he has written and put blood, sweat into. So I'm, I'm blessed and happy to be able to play home row and, and for people to see. No, it was incredible to watch. And again, in our very short, very short production process, how you tapped into the character and tapped into like the, the beat and rhythm of the words was really incredible. Um, how, how did you just like a little brief 
as actor's story? Like, how did you approach the character of Homerella? Did it feel close to you? Did it feel like something you had to reach for? What was it like for you to play Homerella? Um, harking back to what I was saying with uh, theater, one of the things that we did a lot too was spoken words. So that was when I was writing poetry. The last time I wrote poetry was in, when I was in high school. So having that in my toolbox was great, you know, being that we had done spoken word way, way back. So that helped me to tap into home row as far as the cadence and finding the rhythm and realizing that this is a spoken word, that there were pieces that were spoken word. Not everything was, but um, one of the most difficult ones was actually the, the stand-up piece for me. That was the most challenging, but watching it, for me personally, that was my favorite one to see. Maybe because as an actor, it was challenging for me to see. So to see the execution of it was like, oh, I had nothing to worry about. Or, you know, <laughs> I didn't have much to worry about, I guess. Um, but that was the most challenging, just figuring out comedic timing and, and, and pacing and, you know, what we worked on. Excellent. I have a question from Greg. And so Camille, I'm going to pull you into this too. Everybody, this is Camille. Um, so I have a question from Greg saying, how did you coordinate the dance and lines? Were the dances meant to visual in every scene to visualize the, visualize the words, especially he said, scrape my skin off was uh, particularly on point for that. Uh, well, we did, we had uh, craft the piece based on the text. So like uh, Chesney um, did a scratch, ta uh, scratch track of, um, the recordings of the actors uh, doing the different poems uh, with the music underneath it so that they could build the movement based off of both the music and the text. Yeah, so when we, have, when we were filming- Did you have the music uh, at the same we, time? Did you have the music when you were doing the work or was the music put in afterwards? The music actually came first. I mean, before we started filming. So the music was uh, uh, underneath the trail, was added to the recordings of the, uh, the audio recording of the actors saying the text. And I just want to give a shout out. Chesney is here with us as well. Chesney. Hi, hi everyone. Hey, Chesney, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. For, uh, I'm so happy to, to be here and that you're all here uh, to talk about it. That was. It was kind of interesting breaking the internet. I can't. Uh, you did it. I, I was, I was yeah. Knock it down. Kind of crazy. Yeah. The technical difficulties, but thank you uh, for being here. I'm. I'd love to join the conversation uh, about this. It's like a preview, right? This is what previews are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you were just getting out of the dressing room, changing. So I know you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I also want to welcome Winston Dynamite Brown, um, one of our dancers, if you can see him here. Like, absolutely incredible. Um, I can also say as someone, you know, you know, I think Primary Stage is mostly does straight plays. And so working with choreographers and bringing dance into the experience was so incredible. Such an incredible layer to add into the work as well. Um, I want to, AJ, I want to check in with you about since before we, I'm gonna to go to Chesney next, but like AJ, your process with creating this music, um, you know, Deirdre uh, Murray was her composer, incredible, incredible um, artist. And AJ was kind of in charge of interpreting it, but interpreting it in a very strange way. You know, usually in a rehearsal room, you would have the composer and the instrumentalist kind of all working together with the artist at the same time. But AJ had to kind of envision what the piece was going to be composed to that. And then we took his music and gave it to the artist. So AJ, go tell us about your process on this. Well, it was a real honor working with Deidre Murray, um, a legend. Um, and to, to have, you know, Zoomies with her was just a, a real pleasure to, to hear about the craft behind it and then trying to make it work with dancers and, and actors where in this, in this very interesting environment, which I think we'll look back at in one or two years and think, wow, this, we made something happen in 2020. That, that's, this is a big feat. This is hopefully something we won't have to deal with 
in subsequent years. The communication is tough over Zoom and email and texts and messages. It's, uh, but it, it was just like a, and a real honor to, to do this with such talented people. Yeah. It was absolutely incredible. I think that is beautiful. So, Chesney, I'm coming down to you now. Really honored to be able to um, have this opportunity. Uh, I felt very blessed to be able to tell, uh, you know, share these stories and work with such an incredible team of artists and uh, create uh, collaborators and co-creators. I would say that um, you know, I'm I'm really excited to see what happens. You know, tomorrow when we start to combine more of the elements of of the, of the music, um, uh, you know, when we get some some cues and as we build it, I'm really excited to see where the piece goes. Um, you know, the stories, you know, are are real stories, um, and you know, I was really, I was really thankful. You know, we had been talking over the summer, just kind of about what what was going on and what was happening um, in our community and really in our country um, back in August and September. And it totally, um, I just knew that this that these that this story had to be told. You know. Um, and I think tomorrow it's going to get even better and it's going to grow and it's going to get, I'm just really excited to see it, you know, grow because I love this form. I love the Koyo poem. And I think we can do something really exciting um, in this new space that while we're here, you know. Yeah, we're in a, we're a real preview process. So tomorrow night we'll add in some more kind of uh, music cues for the process. You know, you can't, you can't, um, you can take the girl out of the theater, but you can't take the theater out of the girl. So we like we need to put our pieces in front of audiences and see how people respond to actually um, move forward on it. And I would love to hear Chesney about how did you go about finding these stories? I think it's so touching and like so. Mm -hmm. It's so. I think it's very special that these are based on true stories of people you yeah. talk. About. Like, how did you go about finding that and capturing their voices and their rhythms and everything and moving that into an artistic scene? Well, I mean, it just, it just, you know, it just happened. I was just really listening to the people around me um, as, as we were all experiencing this very surreal, like unbelievable experience. Like no one ever thought the world would literally shut down. <laughs> You know, um, like YouTube, <laughs> shut down. Like I, would, no one would ever imagine it. But um, but the, you know, when the num, when people, you know, when when it hit my family, when when my family was like, you know, we lost two people, you know, um, and I wasn't the only one. I wasn't the only person in the family who was saying like I've lost more than one person to this disease, you know. Um, and, and, you know, I, and I would, I would talk to my grandmother and, and, you know, I, I was, I was able to like talk to my mom because I hadn't really been able to spend time with my mom the way that I did. I, I spent like a good two months with her, you know, um, I hadn't done that since I was in high school. Um, and so it was just a really necessary time for me to, to listen. So I, you know, I listened to my grandmother, who I started to kind of have conversations with, you know, she was in Texas, you know, you know, she's eight, you know, she's in her 80s. And, and, you know, it was really difficult there because of how people weren't taking the virus seriously, mm -hmm. and how it disrupted her life and how, because she was able to be so active, you know, because she went to the gym and she went to the spa and all of a sudden no one was taking it seriously out there. No one was taking COVID seriously. Mm -hmm. And I went to Minneapolis, which was uh, right, went to stay, be with my mom and then the George Floyd murder, ha uh, murder happened. And I was like, well, like I could see the smoke from St. Paul, you know? Um, and so it just, I just really felt this desire to want to create. And I, and I had some of the most amazing 
friends and collaborators in my head to to work with you know um i have to it's i i'm just glad that i got to be able to be a part of bringing the team together to start to tell these stories and i had a vision i wanted to do a choreo poem you know because i felt like a lot of the things that i was seeing um you know in the space didn't really reflect the, the potential of the choreo poem and so with these amazing collaborators that's how it formed it came to be you know it's you know amazing. camille aj Deidre, the actors yeah. and i think it's going to get even i hope it gets even better if we keep the, the yeah this moving. is just the first stop in the piece and i think it's also really remarkable to in this very kind of contained um framework to attempt something as broad and expansive as the core of poem you know, it's a it's a it's a big meal you took on, and I think it was yeah, a really yeah, incredible thanks. job. Um, I love Thank for and I know uh, Winston, if you're still around, I'd love to have you pop in, but I know you might be in, in transit. But Chesney and Camille, I would love to hear, and Winston and AJ and everybody who can like talk about like what the choreo poem means and like how what was it like to translate it into kind of a virtual. Mm -hmm remote and not only a virtual medium but a remote filming medium where everyone had to kind of press play and stop themselves i think it, we had to adapt to what we would normally do for the stage stage there could be a little bit more abstraction as uh, between the the dancers yeah. and the the dancers and Homerell and Dor uh, Dory and um, Professor Lawrence because they're like well Dory and um, Homerell are sort of in the same world in terms of them being in communication for, while Professor Lawrence is sort of this like um, higher being in compared to the two of them that they they use as an influence or as a motivator right and then the dancers are sort of in this or a representation and how we would do it on the stage, how we do it on the stage is there, it would be a little, it would look more um, fluid, I think in the sense of uh, they're not having to have the different um, medium representations that do the connective tissue the way we need to do on the screen to show like, okay, now they're definitely looking at a YouTube video. We had to like show that to get us to, tr we had to create different transitions to um, meld these different worlds and to just, have the the storytelling communicate the way we wanted it to via the film medium um and so we had to we and we didn't get to have as much time to let the music and the dancing and the um the choreo poem pieces marry in the way that we would have time to do for the stage so we had to adapt um yeah so yeah adapt a lot <laughs> Yeah, and it was indeed a much shorter pre rehearsal process than we would normally have. So, um, you know, this is really from the page to the stage in that sense, you know. So I'm making an assumption as a viewer that this is an interim step and that eventually when live theater comes back to some sort of form, this will be a live performance. So I'm curious, Chesney, is as you are iterating through the process, are you keeping in mind an ultimate goal for the stage? And if yes. so, do you mm -hmm. see that, it, that this piece can have a dual life, one continuing on a video platform yes. and one on the stage? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that you should say that because I was certainly, I was definitely thinking uh, about that um, going into it because I, I had been looking at this idea of live cinema and how live cinema shows are set up uh, in spaces. Um, and I was, just, and I was thinking, and, and because I was thinking about doing the choreo poem in live cinema, I was thinking about like, what would it mean if we actually had a stage and you could really go into what the choreography and the movement of the body can do and what the body looks like in space moving and what it looks like to film it live, right? So that it looks like you're actually, you know, like you're, you're, you're just creating a, a, a different space, you know? Um, and so when this, when this happened, it made me think, well, you know, 
the way in which people have to are, are experiencing communicating with each other is it has to be in some kind of virtual reality form but it can't stay there if that makes any sense do you know what i mean so the way that i thought that theaters would be able to even develop their audiences you know is to kind of be forced to move into that space of like uh media uh productions and 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 how you know what kind of experiences are they giving to people online you know um, I started to kind of see a new a new company called Verbella, uh, which is kind of at the cutting edge of like virtual reality, uh, um, like VR on regular platforms like your iPhone or your or your laptop, you know, or your tablet, where you're actually moving around spaces, you know, uh, something that Zoom, like a cross between Zoom, like a place where business meetings meet, and thinking about how can you design those sorts of spaces. Uh, uh, with film and performance uh, live. So yes, I, I, I'm keeping an eye on that. I hope it, I hope it does get those. No, I think it has to, you know, I think, um, and this is the, this is the kind of weird specification I gave to all the artists we commissioned for the virtual season was like, it's theater, but filmed or videoed. You know, it's not a short film. We're not doing this. It's like, how do you translate theater to the screen? You know, and so I think that's, and I think that's like what this, the different mediums that this piece worked in and how they call, how you all collaborated together. I think that really accomplished a, a sense of theatricality, you know, even though we're just all watching on YouTube when YouTube works. Um, <laughs> excellent. Does anybody else have any other questions? I'm going to shout out Winston before he signs off because I know he just messaged that he was um, about to leave because I know you're on um, public transit, but thanks so much for joining us. And, you know, I got a chance to sp speak with Winston and Latara the other day uh, briefly. And if you want more of their story, we have a, a 30 minute masterclass that they spoke about their whole process. Um, and it's so interesting to hear um, not only how they've been uh, choreographing, moving choreography to a virtual medium and additionally about their company because they also have a dance company uh the dynamite share the e experience um and so to see how they work so well together and how they translated that work um into collaboration with chesney and the rest of the team um has been so inspirational and awesome yeah i mean i i, I what I, I it's it's almost like just a such a a mind like it takes your mind your head off to think like how quickly this came together i don't think people understand like the 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 level of like how people had to create in like what what felt like a week <laughs> but it wasn't a week but like like that's literally um the feeling of it and you know but i knew that the the team had to be at an you know a genius level in order to pull to pull off to pull it off, you know, to actually do it. Um, and so I just, you know, I was blessed to be able to surround myself with amazing artists like uh, Winston, you know, Kevis, I'd known Kevis since he was in high school, uh, you know. Um, I, I just, I, I was just very blessed, you know, with this amazing team and I can't wait for tomorrow. So please tell people to, uh, you know, sp spread the word. Yeah, spread the word, this is running through Sunday. People can keep checking it out. Um, tomorrow there'll be another version up. We'll have our second preview with a little more music in it for everybody. Um, this is wonderful. Are there any more questions before we say goodbye for the night? Thank you so much, everyone. Again, shout out to our incredible artists who joined us, AJ and Kevis and Camille and Chesney. And I'm going to make sure you're going to do one other shout out because there's a big thing that we, we are doing several student matinees. We're, we're doing some student matinees uh, where uh, in part of our mission of uh, supporting uh, not only uh, team rights, writers and our, all of our educational programs. So there our, our educational efforts are going to reach out and they're going to participate with Chesney, which is going to be, and team, which is going to be amazing. So, um, 
an important moment for everybody. Yeah, I think this is, especially at this moment, to be able to give this this piece to this piece of art to students is really, really incredible.